Welcome to Church on the Rise. It is our hope that you are encouraged, enriched and enlarged as you listen to this week's message. But I was thinking this week being uh, Australia Day and all today about what it is that makes Australia Australia, what it is that makes an Australian an Australian because we're a, a pretty mixed bag of nuts, aren't we? Australian and even just in this room really to be honest, but uh with the vast majority of Australians not really having any uh, strong cultural tie, if any, to this nation's first people, yet collectively we have developed an identity. And collectively we've developed this culture that's unique and it's all our own. It is uniquely Australian. It is identifiable. You can see it. It's, it's, not, it's not something that's grown up traditionally all throughout the years. It's something that's evolved, and, but, but you can point at it and say we are Australian. It's those things that define us, those attributes and values that identify us. It's those qualities that make an Aussie an Aussie. I know there'd be things going through your mind right now, even as I'm speaking. I'm not sure if it's largely a great love for the outdoors, if it's about passionate barbecue ownership, (laughs) or the laziness in our pronunciation of the English language. I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe it's seen in our ability to tear and destroy a mate with sarcasm yet let them know that we love them greatly all in the same breath. I don't know what it is. Is it seen in our give it a crack? Not taking yourself too seriously. Laid back, help out a mate, can do attitude. Or most likely it's seen in all of the above. But no matter what it is, no matter what it is that you point to or no matter what it is that identifies you as an Australian to somebody else, our behaviours reveal our belonging. Our behaviours show what it is that we value, that, that, we, that we subscribe to, who we belong to. Our actions reveal our values, what we do and how we do it shows our group identity and and i think for australians how we say it says i'm with them you know it's 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 interesting you know americans they find our accent so funny i <laughs> say g'day mate oh g'day mate and they try and say it. and it's like as soon as we say it they're like oh you're an aussie it, uh, it, it 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 reveals who we are it says i'm with them and all those things and many more say that we are aussies They are distinguishable characteristics that define us and identify us. You can look at what we do, you can look at how we do it, and you can most certainly listen to how we say it and say, yep, that's an Aussie right there. I wonder today, as people look on at our lives, as they look at us, at those distinguishable characteristics that define us, I wonder if people can say, yep, they're a Jesus follower. Are they able to look on at our lives, at those things that we do, and by our behavior, come to the conclusion that they belong to Jesus? I was thinking about uh, the the story of, of Peter as Jesus is, is taken away by force from the Garden of Gethsemane and is, uh, they, they begin this inquisition into, who are you, Jesus, and what are you about? And, and, Jesus, uh, and Peter follows in the distance. And there's a, there's a girl in the courtyard who says, Peter, weren't you with, with Jesus? Aren't you one of them? And he denies it, and he says, no, I'm not. And then he's asked again, and, and, and she says this interesting statement. She says, surely your speech gives you away, because I can hear there's something definable, distinguishable about you that gives you up, that says, no, you've been with Jesus. It's almost like as soon as you drop the g'day, mate. Jesus dropped the g'day, mate, and he said, no, no, I know, what, I hear what you're saying, uh, but by what you say, I can hear that you've been with him. Your speech gives you up. I wonder, do you have those definable, distinguishable characteristics that identifies you as a Jesus follower? I want to talk with you today 
about identifiable characteristics and the title of the message is Behaviour Reveals Belonging. Everyone say that with me. Behaviour Reveals Belonging. Let's pray this morning. Father God, we thank you for your word. Father God, I guess even on this being Australia Day, we, we stop just for a moment and thank you about the great country that we've been afforded to live in. We find ourselves in favourable situations and circumstances and even here on the Sunshine Coast, God, all we can do is say thank you. But we are reminded to whom much is given, much is required. But Lord God, we just thank you, Heavenly Father, that we get to live in this blessed nation and we declare that it is the great south land of the Holy Ghost. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would move and have your way upon this nation, upon the hearts of its leaders. That you would breathe again on your church, Lord God, and awaken her to be all you've called her to be, your glorious bride. And this morning, Heavenly Father, we pray that your word might find good soil in our hearts, that it might take root. That as we come and around your word, we thank you that it shall achieve that for which it's set out for, Lord God. And as I speak in generalities, that you would speak to the specifics of our very heart here in this place today. That you would move and have your way. We pray that it would be to the glory of your name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 As Christ ones, as Christians, as ambassadors of Jesus, we are to look like we... We are to behave like, we are to sound like Jesus. We are to value what he values, to, to love what he loves, to, to hate what he hates, and to do what he does. It was Paul, the Apostle Paul, in his letter to the church in Philippi, who said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. He said, follow me, copy me, do what... Jesus does do what Jesus did I mean out of all the things that Jesus did in coming to earth for us and as Ray so eloquently spoke about this morning over communion of all the things that God did to make a way for us one other thing that he did he, he came to show us what God looks like in man if we're wondering like how does how can how, how am I to act how am I to behave how, what am I to do we look at Jesus and see that's what that's what God looks like in a man he came to show us what God looks like and Paul says that you're going to do anything Im imitate Jesus just do what Jesus did if you're wondering what you should do just just do <laughs> do what Jesus did and Paul continues on with this thought and this and addresses this thought further in his letter to the church in Philippi and he says these words he says have the same attitude as Christ Philippians chapter 2 starting at verse 1 Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one Spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others, above yourselves easier said than done not looking to your own interests but each of you to the interests of others in your relationships with one another have the same mindset as christ i mean paul's not just encouraging us to do good things he's encouraging us to be like jesus having the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage rather he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance as a man he humbled himself by coming obedient to death even death on a cross therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father therefore my dear friends as you have always obeyed not only in my present but now much more in my absence continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you it's not your own ability. It's not your own strength. It's not your can-do attitude. It's God 
who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything, everyone say everything, without grumbling and arguing. A few of you just swallowed a bit deeply then. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars, <clears throat> sound like Les, in the sky. <clears throat> it's contagious. Paul says, as you look like, as you act like Jesus, specifically as you serve and love one another, humbling yourself to the point of serving one another. It's then, it's then at that moment, he's saying, when you do that, when you love one another that way, when you humble yourself, when you push to the side your interests, and I mean, this, this is hard. I mean, this is so easy to say. This is so easy to preach about, but living, living this out is just on a day-to-day basis just so difficult to say, I want to go there, but they want to go there, so I'm just going to push this to the side and, and, and do that. I'm going to serve them. I'm going to, I'm going to love them, but it's then that that Paul says it's then when you live like that it's then that you will shine like shining stars to those out there who's the them those out there those that aren't part of the family yet and then when they look and when they look for you and they see your love one for another, it's then that they will see that you belong to Jesus. It's then that they will see Jesus in you. As you have love for a one another, Jesus is seen in you. Your behavior reveals your belonging. Peter, your speech reveals that you've been with Jesus. As you say, g'day, mate, your speech reveals that you are an Australian. Your behavior reveals your belonging. I think about uh, when Jenna and I go to the the football down in Brisbane. I'm often shocked that, that people around about us, people that we walk past, complete strangers, I've never seen them before in my life. I don't know them and they know nothing about us and don't know us yet somehow they know something about us they know what we are doing they know where we are going and they know what team we support now i'm not sure if if it's the flag that gives it away i'm not sure it could it could be it could have something to do with it or it could be the hats that we wear perhaps maybe i don't know could be the bag it says lines I'm, I'm i'm not sure maybe it's the jersey that we wear on the way that we're walking that may give them just a slight inclination as to what we're about or the membership lanyard that may do something as well or or a scarf or two in winter time i'm not i'm not exactly sure what it is but something about us makes them think that we're supporters of the Brisbane Lions. And I'm shocked. I don't know what it is. I turn to Jenna and say, why would they think that we are going to the Gabba and that we love the Brisbane Lions? Maybe it's not just what we're wearing. Maybe it's as we march down the street, we're singing, we are the pride of Brisbane town to the tune of (laughs) the French national anthem. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But there's something about our behavior that reveals our belonging. Our outward behavior has identified us as belonging to the Brisbane Lions crew, to those out there, to complete strangers. They don't know us. They, they don't know us, but they know something about us. And all of that without needing an explanation. Your behavior reveals your belonging. Before Jesus went to the cross, he gathered his disciples together in a room and, and did something quite profound, something incredibly remarkable, something really powerful, something that if we, we got a, really got a hold of would truly set us apart and identify us. 
Something that if we really got a hold of it, we, it would truly define us. Something that if we would do it, that if we would become it, it's then that others could look on the them, the those out there, and they would say with no explanation, they are, they are Jesus ones. They belong to Jesus. By their behavior, by what they do, by how they live, by what they value, their behavior reveals that they belong to to Jesus. I'm going to read from John chapter 13, starting at verse 1. It was just before the Passover festival, and Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you, you have no part of me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, Not just my feet, but also my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only wash their feet, and the whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you, for he knew who was going to betray him. And that's why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. But now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one he sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. You know, so often in Scripture, the word is literal. It means what it says. But there are other times in Scripture where things are used as a metaphor. Jesus spoke in parables and stories. He used them as a metaphor to, to give illustration to a deeper truth where he speaks figuratively. Now, because of some of my many dysfunctions... I'm choosing to believe that the washing of the feet is a metaphor for serving one another and that Jesus is not literally asking me to wash people's feet. Now, don't write me an email. I'm not presenting my exegetical stance. I'm just saying I am choosing to believe that Jesus is speaking figuratively for very real and personal reasons. All throughout my life, people who have known me well have suggested that, that I should hold a foot washing service and ceremony at the church where I should wash people's feet to display my love and humility in following Christ's example. Now they suggest this not because they're Christ-like, they suggest this because they think themselves to be very funny. Because they understand two things about me. One, I have a strong dislike for feet. I don't like to see them, I don't like to touch them, and I definitely don't want to wash them. Secondly, I have a very, very strong gag reflex. <laughs> so unless you want this in church, <laughs> let's, just, let's just not even go there. I'm going to gag just thinking about it just now. <laughs> but gag reflex and foot dislike aside, Jesus is showing us something so incredibly powerful. Life is not found 
in serving one's own desires. But life is found in serving the needs of others. Life is found in community. The best that God has for us is not found in isolation. It's found in community. It's found in belonging. It's found in one another. You know, God hides himself in each other. Some of our God questions are answered as we sit across a table one to another. Some of our God answers are found as we love one another. Jesus said, if you live like this, that you will have a blessed life. He said, now that I've shown you, now that I've displayed it, now that you've seen it, me who you should all be honoring and worshiping me. Don't you know who I am? I am the son, not I, I am the son of God humbled myself i've removed clothing i've bowed down before you i've washed your feet in a day and age where open shoes and not sealed roads and lots of animals and agriculture and the things that would be picked up on people's feet at the end of the day the evening he bowed down to wash their feet he said now if i if i did it now you go and do what i've given you and as example now that i've shown you how to live this is this is how you should live and if you now live this way, you will be blessed. But beyond blessing you, beyond being a blessing to the family for which you do love one another, beyond all of that, your love to one another is what marks you. It's what defines you. It's what identifies you. It's what makes you distinguishable. It's what makes you stand out from amongst the crowd. It's when you, it's when you do that, Jesus said, it's then you'll love one for another is what shows people that you are truly, in fact, my disciple. You might think it's all these other things, but it's, it's, it's not that at all. What makes it seen, what makes it tangible, what makes it real is that people can look at you and see your love one to another and go, oh, they're Jesus ones. It's that one thing. It's that, it's that one thing that identifies you as a follower of Jesus by everyone out there. You want them to know, you should, you want them to know Jesus. You want them to know that there's no life apart from him. You want them to know that he is real. They'll know, they'll know by your love one for another. Not by what you say, but by what you do. Because behavior reveals belonging. And just after washing their feet, Jesus drops this bomb. John chapter 13, verse 34. He says, a new command I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, man, that's a big love. So you must, you must love one another. By this, everyone, to the exclusion of nobody, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So many things that we think, you know, if we wear the right shirt, you know, are they a Christian? No, no, Jesus says it's just the one thing. It's just the one, the one thing that identifies you. Hey, guys, I know that there's all these things that people can look at and go, oh, you're an Aussie. I get it. But as a Christ one, to them out there, to those, Jesus says it's just one thing. It's not what you say, but it's how you love. It's how you love one another. It's how you lay down your desires it's how you push past your own desires and those things that you don't want to get involved in in the muck and with people's feet i mean i don't want to touch people's feet that's just gross but but jesus jesus as i said i'm choosing to use it as a metaphor he wants you to get involved in the yuck things of people's lives he wants you to get involved in their journey our feet are, are representative of the paths that we've trotted out the things that we've walked through to get to where we are and and jesus is saying i want you to get involved in that i want you to be part of the, the the healing process of that i want you to to bring healing and wholeness i want you to bring cleanliness to that i want you to get involved in people's lives as you would bow down and humble yourself as you think that you're too busy for people as you 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 you, you subdue that thought and as you give your best, Jesus is saying, it's there, it's there, there, there. You're loving one another. And it's there. People look on and go, Jesus is real. I can see it in them. That's what makes him seen in you. You know, it's not like the footy. It's not the hat. It's not the scarf. It's not the jersey. It's not the song that gives it all away. It's just one thing. It's just your love 
one for another. Hey guys, what makes you look like your Jesus, what makes you look like your mind is not your Sunday attendance, which is needed. Do not forsake the gathering, even so much so as you see the day approaching. It's not your obedience in bringing his tithe and your offering. It's not in reading your Bible. It's not in praying. It's not in life groups. But rather it's seen by those that are out there in your real, tangible love one for another. Now all those things, gathering, offering, praying, reading, meeting in homes, are of incredible importance and we're instructed and encouraged by the word of God to continue in these things. They are of paramount importance. And it's how God builds us up and it's how God builds his church. I'm just highlighting the distinction here that Jesus makes without going into all of that. As he said, the thing that sets you apart, the thing that makes you identifiable to those out there, to the them, is the single behavior that reveals you that you belong to me is your love one for another seen in washing feet it's seen in serving one another it's seen in being a family it's seen in supporting and helping and cheering one another on it's seen in eating and laughing and crying and praying with loving one another is where what God is is where what God has done comes into its own it takes it from being hypothetical to being real. Je- Jesus said, you know, it's easy. easy. Oh, sorry, it's not, it's not Jesus. It was, um, it was James. You know, how can you love God who you can't see, who you ca- can't see and when you don't love your brother who you can see? It's what makes who God is and what he's that's tangible and real, something beyond a hypothesis, something beyond a theory. It makes it something real. If I get the keys back this morning, it'd be great. Romans chapter 15, verse 1, and I'm reading from the message paraphrase this morning. Those of us who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter and not just do what is most convenient for us. Strength is for service, not for status. Each of us needs to look after the good of the people around us, asking ourselves, how can I help? I wonder how often do we ask that question when we see a need. I'm often looking for the exit door. We're uh, we're meant to be looking, how can I help? What can I do? What's my part to play? How can I show the love of God? How can I make God real in this situation? How can I inject God into this circumstance? Each of us should be asking, how can I help? What can I do? do that's exactly what jesus did didn't make it easy for himself by avoiding people's troubles but he waded right in and and helped out i took on the troubles of the trouble is the way that scripture puts it even if it was written in scripture long ago you can be sure it's written for us god wants the combination of his steady constant calling and warm personal counsel and scriptural scripture to come to characterize us to define us, to mark us, to identify us, keeping us alert for whatever he will do next. May our dependably steady and warmly personal God develop maturity in you so that you will get along with each other as well as Jesus gets along with us all. I mean, the bar is high, the standard's high. I mean, how do we love Jesus? I, I love you. You love them. Jesus, that's a big love. That's a big love. Then we'll be a choir. Not our voices only, but our very lives. Singing in harmony, our very lives displaying, our very lives prophesying, our very lives preaching, our very lives testifying, our very lives modeling the goodness of God. Singing in harmony in a stunning anthem to the God and Father of our Master, Jesus. So reach out. And welcome one another to God's glory. Jesus did it. Now you do it. I, I just love that. It's real simple, isn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm sometimes, I'm a slow learner. Boo, it takes me a while to get it. But I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty clear. 
Jesus did it. Now you do it. What should I do? Oh, it's really, what should you do? Just, just love one another. What should I do in this situation? You should ask, how can I help? Today, it's a very simple application. Jesus did it. Now you go and do it. So maybe it's not washing feet specifically. But it is serving. It is looking out for. It is connecting with. It is being vulnerable and present. And not only does this display the incredible love of God, it opens us up also to that love that God is wanting to pour out and in and through your life. Through the blessing of community. We need one another. It's not an optional extra. God has wired you for it and you will run at a deficit if you don't have it. One day when I feel released, I'm going to share on the power and the blessing found in group identity from the word and the heart of God. We've all been created for a tribe. Levi wasn't Judah. Judah wasn't Levi. We've all been created for tribes, for belonging. And identity is discovered not just in isolation, but in group. God wants to bless us. God's hidden himself in those next to you. And he doesn't just bless you this way. He blesses you this way. But until then, church, let's love one another. You need to give it. You need to receive it. And the they, the those out there, they need to see it. They need to see it. It's, 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 what, it's, it's what makes it real. Telling them you're a Christian doesn't make it real. Wearing a t-shirt doesn't make it real. Putting a fish sticker on your car doesn't make it real. Attending church for them doesn't, for you it makes it real. For them doesn't make it real. Giving for you makes it real, but for them it doesn't make it real. What makes it real for them, Jesus said that they shall know that you are my disciples, that you belong to me. If you love one another, it's tangible. You can see it. You can sense it. It's fear. You can feel it. And there's something that's undeniable about the love of God. It's not normal. You can't argue it. You know, I think if we all remember back to those moments where we first encountered the love of God, it just stood apart from everything else and just blew your mind because it's not normal, it's not natural. And when they see that in you, they know that you belong to Him. Would you stand with me this morning as we finish up and allow me to pray for you today? God, this morning, on this Australia Day, as we think about those things that make us uniquely Australian, this mismatch of multiculturalism, mismatch of experience, and such a young nation, Lord God, for, for those of us that weren't born here, that, were, that aren't First Nations people, we're such a young nation, Lord God, and we have this new identity, this new culture that we're able to point to and see, Lord God, that, oh yeah, there, 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 they're Australians. Lord God, this morning we're reminded by your word that there's something that identifies us, that causes us to stand out. Come on. Thank you. That they can look at us and see that they belong to Jesus this morning, Lord God. We commit to following your command to love one another, to journey together. We commit to vulnerability we, we, where healing can occur, where powerful prayers can Come be prayed, on, you, celebrating thank wins you, together and consoling over losses together. 
that God, not only is your blessing found there, but, but it's attractive, it's identifiable, and it speaks of your goodness to those outside the family of God, that those who look on, that those are looking for something that's real, something that's genuine, for something that's authentic, Lord God. They don't want to know what we know, Lord God. They want to see your love in us. They want to encounter your love. It's your love that changes us. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. And so, Lord God, that we would be ambassadors of your love. We hand over to you those roadblocks, those things that stop us from loving so honestly and vulnerably. Those hurts, those pains, those things that people did to us, Lord God, that that we opened ourselves up and they abused that. But Lord God, we don't want to hide that away because it's in that place that you want to shine. And so we give that to you this morning, Lord God, and thank you that your Holy Spirit would come and bring healing and wholeness into our own lives. Well, God, you said it's just two things, just two things, Jesus said. It all just boils down to two things, love God and love one another. So this morning, God, may we love inclusively. And may we love expansively. Because love never fails. Everything else we can try, all our little gimmicks, all little things, all, 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 our, all our plans, all, all, all our ideas, all that can fail. But love never fails. It, ne- it never fails. So we ask this morning, would you help us, Lord Jesus, to be great ambassadors of you? And the beauty of it all is, Lord God, we get your best in the process. It's, you're no man's debtor, that as we give our all, Lord God, you pour back into our lives and we're blessed by the lives that are around about us. As you shine in them and through them upon us. We thank you for the blessing of community. But Lord God, this morning, we, we're, we're, we're a light. We need to set it up. We're we're, we're a city on a hill. We need to shine, Lord God. We need to be salt and light. And This morning, as we think about those identifiable qualities as Aussies, we're reminded this morning, Lord God, that it's love that defines us, our love one for another. Help us to love this way. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Let's give God a hand of praise in this place this morning. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this week's message. If we can help you in any way, please get in touch with us via the web at caloundra.churchontherise.org.au.